Hey everyone, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. No face cam today, sorry. Um, the lighting is just really bad right now because it's night and I don't have like soft boxes to make my face appear brighter. But yeah, my goal is to like speed run through every single major or um, important free agency signing. So strap in and hopefully this video comes in underneath five minutes. So first one, Chris Paul, four year, $120 million deal. Seems like a lot. He's uh, 36 years old. Now I expect that from ages like 36 to 38, so the first two years, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. You're seeing guys play longer and longer and later into their careers like Chris Paul, Roger Federer, Justin Gatlin and um, track and field and Tom Brady, of course. Five years ago, I would have said, yeah, this is a terrible deal, but given that CP3 has been so, you know, longevity already, maybe it's okay. Next up, Kyle Lowry, um, three years, $90 million with the Heat. And I think it's a sign and trade, um, probably going Dragic going out. Obviously, Lowry is getting up there in age, similar to CP3, he's like 35, but this deal is a year shorter, so it is, you know, better, I guess. And Kyle Lowry himself has also been extremely productive even later in his career. I don't think Lowry is a star that pushes, you know, Miami over the top, but Lowry definitely makes him better. And at this cost, it's not like too expensive, but Miami will really need Bam Adebayo to really step up and be like an actual superstar because otherwise it's very tough to beat, you know, the Nets or the Bucks. Next one, Mike Conley, back to the Jazz for three years, $74 million. I don't like it to be honest. Um, I think at this point of his career, Mike Conley is just too injury prone to be consistently there for you. We saw this year that he low-key cost him the Clippers series, right, by missing the first, I think, like four games. Ideally, Utah can find their next, you know, franchise point guard to pair alongside Donovan Mitchell sooner rather than later because, like I said, at Conley's age, I don't think you can depend on him for much longer. Next one, Lonzo Ball to the Bulls for four years, $85 million. Um, I think this is a little bit of the upper tier in terms of like how much teams are willing to pay him, but I don't think it's really an overpay because I think at his best, Lonzo can be your third best offensive player and $22 million a year is perfectly fine to pay for someone like that. I don't think Lonzo makes the Bulls contenders because I don't think Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic are good enough to be your you know top two players on a championship team, but I do think Lonzo Ball gets them closer to playoffs at the very least. And basically taking that same jump the Hawks did this year is pretty much the goal for the Bulls and conference final is probably a bit of a stretch but basically just like make the playoffs right. The Bulls needed a point guard and they got their point guard. Norman Powell back to the Blazers for five years, $90 million, um, totally fine. Actually it might be a bit of underpay because this is someone who could potentially be like a borderline all-star I guess if like, everything works out. The Blazers absolutely cannot afford to lose anybody right now so bringing back Norman Powell is a you know, great pickup. Duncan Robinson, five years, 90 million. I think in theory, this is like a good signing for the Heat. It's just that like, when these players who pretty much can only shoot and don't really do much for you on offense, don't make threes in the playoffs, it ends up being kind of ugly, just like, like a Joe Harris, right? With the Nets in game seven, when he was not making his three-pointers, he was kind of useless. And yeah, like they still kind of, in theory, space the floor by you because people aren't gonna just leave them open even if they're missing because they're that elite, right? It's just, it can get ugly and I'm not saying it will happen with Robinson, I'm just saying, you know, keep that in mind. Next up, Evan Fournier, Boston loses them to the Knicks for um, four years, $78 million. Totally good pickup for the Knicks, they have cap space to burn, right? And they needed shooting, they needed scoring, they needed overall just like off the dribble, shot making and play making from outside. I think Evan Fournier, he isn't the star that the Knicks need, but he's definitely a great pickup for them. And I think for four years and um, $78 million, totally fine value. Devontae Graham to the Pelicans for four years, $47 million in a sign and trade. Obviously, with Lonzo Ball gone, the Pelicans need more shooting and playmaking to replace that, and Devontae Graham, in theory, provides both. He's actually probably a better shooter than Lonzo Ball. He's not a very efficient scorer because he's pretty much, like, not good from within the three-point line, but it's not like you're paying him a lot of money. And just in case Kira Lewis and, you know, Nikhil Alexander-Walker don't, like, play very well, at least you have a capable starting point guard, at least. Tim Hardaway Jr. for four years, $72 million. That's, you know, fine. Fair market value for a shooter like him. Jared Allen for $100 million, five years. For some reason, people think that this is being overpaid. I don't think so whatsoever. Like, for a young center who has potential like him, this is pretty standard. And I don't think $20 million a year is actually a lot considering the salary cap goes up every single year. This is like the equivalent of paying a center like $17 million a year in like three years and the salary cap does go up. I love the fit between him and Mobley. If Mobley's outside game can actually progress, he should be a great fit at power forward and hopefully his body can, you know, take on less of the wear and tear of being a center. Rashawn Holmes back to the Kings for four years, $55 million. 
Um, perhaps a little bit more than I think teams are comfortable paying him, but Sacramento really can't afford to let their starting center go because they need to make the playoffs next year. It's pretty much like make it or break it time for De'Aaron Fox. It's not easy sucking for five years straight. And Holmes, when he was healthy, was pretty good last year. Kelly Olenek to the Pistons for three years, $37 million. I do not know how he's still getting this much money because there is no way I think a team should be paying Kelly Olenek more than like seven, eight million dollars a year. I know he had a resurgence this year, but like he's on a contract year, right? And I don't think he'll play like that again. Reggie Bullock for um three years, $31 million to the Mavs. I don't think Bullock makes them much better considering the Mavs already had a crap ton of shooting, but at least he's kind of a two-way player. Defensively, he's all right. He's not someone that moves the needle for the Mavericks, but he can help at least. Doug McDermott somehow gets three years, $42 million from the Spurs. Um, he low-key had a kind of nice season last year, actually. He averaged like 13 points per game on, you know, close to 40% shooting from three on like five threes a game, which isn't terrible. It's just, um, that's a lot of money to pay for like Doug McDermott, you know. Now over to the Lakers stuff. Um, they basically got back Dwight Howard, Trevor Reza, and Wayne Ellington, all former Lakers for um, not a lot of, you know, money. And this is exactly what I was talking about before when people were complaining about the Lakers not having spacing and they only had four players on the roster. So how are you gonna complain about the Lakers not having enough spacing when the roster wasn't even filled out? And here they go, they're getting, you know, shooters. Wayne Ellington is like quietly one of the best shooters in the league for the last like half decade. Trevor Reza is, you know, theoretically a 3 and D player. I'm not sure if he's still that guy because he's like 35 now, but hopefully he is. Dwight Howard, great re-signing. Um, I think the Lakers really need someone like him. Alex Caruso to the Bulls for four years, $36 million a year. Um, memes aside, I think this is low-key an overpay for Caruso. I don't think he's worth this much. He's a good defender, but against larger guys, he often gets outclassed down low and offensively pretty inconsistent as both a shooter, a playmaker, all of those things. And I feel like four years, $36 million is kind of a lot. But that's still, you know, not a lot of money. So it's not like they're paying him like $20 million a year. So who cares? This isn't going to, you know, throttle their cap space if it doesn't work out. Zach Collins to the Spurs for three years, $22 million. Um, in theory, he's still got potential. He's big, he's athletic, and it's just that by now, you would have hoped that his skill set would have actually evolved. It's just like he's been hurt for like four years straight, so maybe the Spurs work like their, you know, Spurs magic on him. Daniel Tice to the Rockets for four years, $36 million. To be honest, that's also kind of a lot, but because it's still like relatively a medium-sized deal, not gonna, you know, kill your cap space, right? But my opinion, he's more like a mid-level exception type player. He's a lower end starting center, but you know, it's whatever. I'm pretty sure um Shea Gilders Alexander, Trey Young, Luka Doncic, they're all about to sign like massive contracts. They all earned it. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you there. As for DeMar DeRozan, I feel like, you know, he's waiting for the Miami Heat to try to like make up some cap space to get him. I'm assuming you're gonna have to trade like Tyler Hero. Otherwise, the Rosen signs were like $9 million, which, you know, maybe, just maybe, feels like a little bit of an underpay. But yeah, I am way over five minutes, but I still hope you enjoyed my little speed run of NBA free agency news. And yeah, I'll see you for my shooting guard rankings in a couple days, or unless something, you know, major happens in the NBA, like Kawhi Leonard signing with the Warriors.